Howdy everybody, and welcome to our last installment of our St. Martin vacation. As a recap, St. Martin is a Caribbean island in the Lesser Antilles. It's just east of the Virgin Islands and under Anguilla. You can actually see Anguilla from St. Martin. Now Anguilla is a possession of the United Kingdom and being so close, it's easy to understand how the British took control of St. Martin several times in its past. While working on the episode, we found some footage that better illustrates how larger yachts have difficulty with the Simpson Bay Bridge. Oh wow, look at that. Ambition. A strong crosswind while passing the narrow inlet and things can definitely become very complicated. The real Captain Ron and I went ashore and checked ourselves out of France for Saturday morning. As we motor sailed back up to Grand Cosse, we had a little time for reflection of our visit so far. After setting the anchor, it's best practice to dive the anchor if possible to visually confirm a good seat. It also gives me a good chance to get in the water and cool down and swim with turtles. And this is Grand Cos, known as the Gourmet Village and self-proclaimed culinary capital of the Caribbean. It has 6,500 inhabitants and a second smaller airport that also services the island. You will notice that like Marigo, it's lagging in some of its reconstruction projects. The town is overlooked by a small but functioning rock quarry. The beach is lined with small resorts, Airbnbs, restaurants, and private residences. Lolo's is several Caribbean barbecue places all under one roof, where one dines al fresco next to the beach. The fire starts at 9.30 a.m. On this particular beach, one can find glass that has been polished smoothly with the aid of the incoming surf. Clear, amber, yellow, green, and the most rare find, blue. A few of the photos and videos you see were taken by Paula Pruitt. Another shout out to her and thanks for helping make this a well-executed vacation. As we walked about the town, the French architecture was on display at every turn. Old world charm, 
mixed with a very colorful paint scheme. The Blue Martini, as in St. Martin, is another covered outdoor dining establishment. They do have a non-alcoholic version of their signature drink. We were the first to arrive for dinner service. And it was another excellent dining experience. The food was great and at a fair price. We rounded out the evening shopping the local wares and getting some silk scarf style hacks. As Ronnie and I took in a view of the bay, you can see the lights of Anguilla right there on the horizon. This seems like a good time to give you the flyover footage. Now we've talked about SXM, and Moho Beach is where you'll want to be to experience the flyovers. The runway is about 7,500 feet and has been extended. So one doesn't get the sandblasting routine that you see in some of the older footage of the beach. Still, it's pretty cool. Grand Coss is only about 4,000 feet and just serves prop planes. Mooring one's boat in this area will result in a hefty fine of about $2,000. The masks wreak havoc with approaching aircraft. Now, you can take the boy out of Wichita, but you're never going to take all the Wichita out of the boy. Snorkeling is my favorite part of any saltwater trip. Ronnie and Paula forfeited their early breakfast routine to take me to Creole Rock before the popular spot was overcrowded by tourists. The rock is said to resemble an Amerindian male laying face up and is habitat to a wide array of fish and colorful coral. Although it's not caught on camera, I saw a stingray and I'm pretty sure I saw a reef shark have a lot of GoPro learning to do in order to verify these sightings. If you have any tips and tricks on underwater videography, please leave a comment. Let me know how to improve, how to get the right lighting, the right angles, etc.
So this is my first attempt at a time lapse on the GoPro. It needs some work. I got some things to figure out, but here it is. Les Olivier is a very nice restaurant run by a young French couple. Well worth every penny. The best seats offer a view of the bay. Les Olivier. Good views, great food, and well worth it. Ronnie and Jay filled the dinner conversation with their favorite topic, music. And, and he's one of these guys that Joe, he clearly has only played on his We tried escargot for the first time. It tastes just like mushrooms. I had gnocchi and Jay had steak. It did not disappoint. This little guy kept an eye on the room and made us a little homesick for George. Here is a time lapse of the sunset. Better, but still I think some improvement is needed on my technique. All good things must come to an end. We woke early on Saturday and set sail for Simpson Bay. As we were leaving, a bit of a mild blow swept past us as we sailed out. Nothing dramatic, just a bit of needed rain. We were all treated to some very nice rainbows and even a double. As Ronnie manned the helm and kept an eye out on his tablet for navigation. We can't thank Sea Ventures and their sister company, Windward Sea Ventures in Kima, Texas, enough for the opportunity to experience St. Martin. We made brand new friends, got closer to others, and enjoyed a week in a Caribbean paradise on a 44-foot catamaran. It goes without saying that we definitely recommend a week with Captain Ron and Paula if you get the chance. They are incredible hosts. This was the first vacation since 2019 that I wasn't working at least a few hours a day. I can't recommend enough to stop and just unplug from the world for a week from time to time. An iguana met us at the dinghy dock to say goodbye before we caught a ride to the airport. Oh yeah, the bus is $2 and cabs are $10. Here is our last shot of St. Martin as the plane turned towards the west and headed for home. And to close, here's a small montage of a few of the highlights as we prepare to touch down back in the States, surrounded by Fort Lauderdale all lit up at night.
subscribe. Hit that like button. And leave a comment. We love hearing from you. Till next time.